easier for us to fix or diagnose at least anyway. Uh, it's 2011 Dodge Caravan. Uh, came in on the tow truck. Uh, no crank, no start. Uh, customer was driving home and some lights came on the dash, uh, started to run poorly, stopped, pulled over, shut it off to see if he could reset it. Um, wouldn't start again after that. Uh, cranked a couple times and now it won't even crank. So uh, I got in, uh, confirmed does not, does not crank. Uh, pulled the code P0685, which is for the uh, auto shutdown relay control circuit. So yeah, should be a good one. Uh, so let's get started. And first thing we're gonna do is uh, get some service data. So let's do that. All right, I pulled us up a wiring diagram here. Um, also just wanna say like, if you have this code and you are gonna tackle it, you, you're gonna need service data. Uh, it's gonna be very hard to fix this uh, without service data and that's a little, uh, uh, hint that I actually already know what is wrong with this. I, I did basically diagnose it already, but I wanted to bring you guys along and show you kind of the process that I went. And without service data, it's very difficult to know, I mean, at least a wiring diagram uh, so that you can find out where you're headed. So uh, I get mine from all data. Um, subscribe to it. Uh, if you're just DIYing it, uh, just go to all data DIY. You can get your vehicle's VIN. Uh, service data for I think it's like 20 bucks a year or something it's a dirt cheap uh, it tells you everything that you're going to need to know to fix that vehicle uh, so that even if it's something that you can't do at least you know before you get into it you know whether it's something you feel comfortable tackling or not so go there do that pull up your your diagrams and your repair information and then uh, carry on from there so here is our wiring diagram um, so you got our battery here uh, it sends power down to the PCM uh, through this fuse and it also sends power over to the auto shutdown relay. Uh, it sends it to both the, the switch and also the control side or the uh, I guess it'd be the, the, the relay part of it. Um, so this is your positive for the control and then the uh, power control module uh, supplies the low side, supplies the ground to actuate that relay, which would then close this switch, which would then allow this battery power to make its way down um, through this fuse and to these other uh, circuits that are inside the powertrain control module. And basically, if your auto shutdown relay is not working, um, you don't you don't go anywhere. So there's a few things that we can look at here. Obviously, this relay, if this relay is cooked, um, then it's not going to either the the circuit here or or the switch or whatever is is broken. Then we're not going to have power making its way down to the, the computer. Um, so that relay could be toast. Uh, this fuse here is a slot M19, this 25 amp fuse could be, could be shot. Uh, we could have a bad wire somewhere in here. Um, or the relay could be good, but we're not getting any control out of the power train control module. Uh, so we are gonna test the easiest thing first, and I'll show you kind of what we did to get there. Uh, so basically uh, what we want to do is just test this relay and see if it's working and if it has powers, grounds, all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's go take a look at that. All right, so the uh, auto shutdown relay lives right here and the fuse is right below it here. Uh, you can just find that on the back of your fuse box there. Uh, I'm going to be using this um, relay testing device, it's made by Lyle, uh, makes life a little bit easier for testing. So we can pull it out, uh, here we can see where our, sorry, where are you? 
you can see where our pins are. So we have got 30, 85, 87, and 86 are what we're using. The middle one is not used. Um, and on here, you can see there, uh, maybe right there, they're labeled as to what, what pins are which. Um, so, if we put that in here, also we can notice there's no clicking, so we know there's issue there. Um, I guess the key would be on, but either way, it doesn't work. Okay, so if we look here, we know we should have power on pin 30, and we should have power on pin 85. Um, we shouldn't have any power on 87, because that's where we're going to be sending power to. And this should be our ground from the auto shutdown relay. So, pin 85 is here. That's got power. And pin 30 is on the back side here. And that's got power. Uh, 86. 87, this one shouldn't have power, and this one shouldn't have power, and it does. Now, the reason this one does, and you're saying, why is that? There can't be power on both sides of, right? So there's power on 85, all right, 85, and on 86. Well, the reason there's power on both sides is because this isn't sending us our ground. Um, so power comes through, through the, the coil, and Right straight through because there's nothing to, to ground it. Uh, one thing that tells us though is that the relay is okay. There's continuity in the coil. We could check the resistance of the relay or we could just jumper it and see if it works. Um, so why don't we do that? Uh, I've got some test leads here. So throw us a uh, ground here. And what do we need to ground? We need to ground 86, which is this guy here. There we go. You heard that click. We should be able to check 87 now and power through. And then we can check this fuse as well. And power on that side, power on that side. So now we know that there's uh, our circuitry from here to here at least is good. Uh, we know our relay is good and we know all these wires are good. Um, we can check this M28 fuse to see if it's sending its power down to the fuse B. Um, let me just see if I can find that one. Uh, it's M28. And that's this guy right up here. Well, oh, that's supposed to be a 15 amp. Maybe that's not M28. It's hard to tell. Uh, Twenty-seven. Oh, it's supposed to be twenty-eight. That says it's a fifteen amp. This has got a ten in it. What's this one say? It is M twenty-eight. It's supposed to be. Oh, it says ten or fifteen. So there's that. So anyway, it's got power. So we know that the we are good to here. So we can check at the PCM now. We can check here, here, here. Basically, we know we've got all this is good. So now we've either got a problem in our circuitry here, um, or we've got a problem with our PCM. So uh, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to check for resistance. Um, basically, we'll pull the switches here. So the C3 connector and the C1 connector. Uh, it tells us which ports. So C1 has got 
uh, pin 10, 29, 38, and C3's got pin 19, 28, and 3. So, I will disconnect those and we'll see what we can get for uh, resistances between there just to check those circuits, make sure they're good. Um, at this point, you know, it's pretty obvious. Uh, unless we've got a broken wire somewhere, but uh, it looks like our PCM has failed. So we'll go ahead and check those wires, make sure that our resistances are good, and then, uh, yeah, basically call it. So I'll get set up here to test that, and then we'll, we'll come back. All right, guys, sorry I can't uh, get you any closer than that to see the wire. Uh, it's kind of tight up in here, but uh, basically your PCM is located right in front of your uh, driver side wheel well. Uh, I've disconnected the C3. Oh, sorry, can you still see? Yeah, I've disconnect, disconnected the C3 connector and uh, I've got my one test lead uh, tied to pin 86 on that relay, which is the ground uh, control from the PCM. And this should be, uh, if I can find it here, our wire on the bottom side what do we got there yep okay so 0 0.4 i'm not getting a very good contact but anyway there you go so that wire we know is good uh, and that's the wire uh, on the c3 connector uh, pin 3 up into that 86 control wire all right so i just switched my wire from this pin 86, which goes down to here. That's the C3 wire I was connecting to. I've just jumped over now to this 87. Uh, so now we'll check continuity uh, from the uh, auto shutdown relay all the way down to these two connectors on the C3 connector, uh, pin 28 and pin 19. And then we'll jump over to the C1. So I'm gonna check resistance here and here right now up to this uh, Actuated side of the. All right. So this should be pin 19. Yep. And this should be pin 28. I think it was 28. Uh, yeah, 19 and 28. Either way, we see we've got good continuity there too. So. Uh, basically, we've only got a couple wires left to check here, and then we know where we're at. So let me just uh, switch over here to the other circuit, which should be... Oh, no, I want to stay there. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm staying on that same... Uh, Pin 87, I'm just going to check now on the other connector, C1, pin 38, uh, which should be that one there. Bottom left connector, see if we have continuity there. And we do. So we've checked all those out, now we only have one wire left to check. And that is basically uh, here, the C1-10, uh, the fuse B positive, same as this guy here. Uh, we could just check it across here, but we already know from here to here is good. Uh, but we'll check it from here all the way back to uh, pin, pin 30 or pin 85, sorry. Either on that relay, I'll go to pin 30 or pin 85, and then we'll check down to here. Uh, the C1 connector, Those, these two, I guess, we gotta check both these, B positive. Uh, all right, so those were connectors 29 and 10. Okay, I don't know what those are. Oh, do I? 29. Should be this guy here, and it is, and 
10. Should be this guy here, and it is. All right, so we're good there. So the only other thing that we need to do is check to see if we have a short. Okay, so we'll measure the, the resistance um, between the uh, control circuit and ground to make sure there's no problems there. Here's our ground and our, I pulled the relay out so that we're not having issues there. Uh, and as you can see, can you see? Yeah, no, no resistance there at all. Or sorry, infinite resistance. Uh, so no short is what I meant to say. Uh, and they want us to check the relay for resistance as well it's supposed to be 60 between 60 and 80 on the on the circuit here which is 85 and 86 uh, where are we here 85 and 86 and we're 81.5 so it's it's right within spec um, yeah and service data. So let's just go through, you know, even you can get all these steps. If you don't know where to go, the, all these steps, you know, they're all in the service data. Um, so basically circuit open, we check that. Um, short to ground, we just check that. Uh, and then it just says to check all the wires, you know, uh, using a wiring diagram, schematics guide, inspect the wire. Uh, wiring and connectors between the ASD relay and the powertrain control module. Look for chafe, pierce, pinch, parts of broken wires, uh, and so on, which we've we've done. Um, uh, perform any technical technical service bulletins. Sorry, I can't talk. Perform any technical service bulletins that may need to be applied. Uh, there are none. Uh, so basically, were there any problems found in our testing? No, everything checked out good. So where does that leave us? Replace and reprogram the PCM module. So there you have it. Uh, pretty easy to determine. We need a PCM. That is the problem. I hope you do not have if you have this code. I hope it's a relay because uh, mm -hmm. trying to find a PCM right now. Um, can't find one anywhere in the aftermarket. Uh, called Dodge directly and they are <coughs> excuse me they're a month to get one of these in they're back ordered uh, and if you look on the internet I mean L1 diagnostics anybody the PCMs and these things are going like crazy and it's just it's a nightmare uh, it's also ridiculous to try and program these because the subscriptions keep going up uh, so I tried to get one used at a wrecker they've got nothing they put a link on all their dealer sites across the country can't find anything nobody can get these stupid pcms so that's where this thing's sitting for a month until i can get one from dodge i suppose um when i get it i could possibly do a video perhaps in a month on that um but like i said uh pcm is shot i'm suspecting also that once we get this thing running we are going to look at the alternator and see if it has a short or something, uh, you know, see what caused the issue. I will say this, um, beans where the PCM is located there, right in front of the wheel well, uh, when I was taking off the connectors, one of the connectors, when I took it off, the seal inside of the connector was all swollen and deformed, and it actually wouldn't even go back on. That connector was, there. that seal was completely toast. Uh, so I'm not sure if it got water in there or what, and if that's what shorted out or you know caused issues in the uh, PCM, or if that's just you know another another issue that it had that could have you know was a possibility of something uh, about to happen, I can't get one of those either. Um, can't can't get one from aftermarket. Can't get one from Dodge. Um, unless I buy the whole harness, which for the seal, you know, I'm trying to find one from the record to see if I can just chop a connector off, but. Uh, so far, no luck. Anyway, that's your P0, whatever it was, 685 or whatever it was. Um, 
Yeah, ASD relay, auto shutdown relay. So that's how you diagnose it, and that's how to determine what your problem is. And if you get a bad PCM, uh, I'm sorry, but that's what we have. So we'll see. Maybe we'll do another video. Uh, if you like these videos, don't forget to go down and hit subscribe, leave a comment, question, uh, or if you don't like them, tell us why. We're trying to improve them. We're trying to do more of these, I know. So we're just getting going here on the vi on the old YouTube channel. Uh, but we're trying to get more and more videos up and running for you people to try and uh, help you out where we can. So uh, let us know what you want to see. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what kind of videos you're looking for, and we'll try and keep, keep them coming as often as we can, and hopefully more and more as we go. So, yeah. Uh, for today, that's all. So, we'll see you around. Till next time.